Alrighty, launch day for a new season, and that means there is some new stuff to actually go through. And in this video, I will be talking about the weapons, the exotics, and the patterns that are now currently available for Season of the Deep. So, you might have actually seen a big one, but getting right off the bat, of weapons that were restored and brought back and as well craftable now, the Last Wish weapons are now currently in the rotation and are craftable. So you will see some farming uh, options from Hawthorne. There are some bounties that are generally focused towards Dreaming City, those. So if you wish to actually go about and restore any of the Dreaming City weapons, make them craftable, that is a good time to do it. Not to mention that pretty soon, within the next couple of weeks, actually, as a matter of fact, during this week, Last Wish is currently the farming raid. So if you wish to go farm it out to see if you can make anything right off the bat, this is the best time to go and do it. But aside from that, in terms of our exotics, starting from highest quality to bottom. So we have a new seasonal artifact exotic, which is the Centrifuge. It is an arc auto rifle. It seems to be in the high impact frame category at 450 rounds per minute. And its perk that makes it special is the overcharged capacitor. Sprinting, sliding, and firing this weapon builds a temporary electrostatic charge. Increases range and reload speed. Final blows with high charges cause explosions and maximum charges blind targets. With a subtle secondary perk of sprinting gradually reloading the weapon, and of course it being seasonal, it also has access to a catalyst. Don't know what it does just yet, but it can't harm anything this weapon already does. I'm not sure if this is exactly standard, because from the looks of it, it might have been like an overcharge as opposed to a magazine thing, but it seems like it's pretty solid right off the bat, just because general good stats and good sized mag, and everything else but you know still to be used so hopefully it performs well and on top of it just to dart all the way to the end let's see what the cattle or what the version fluorescent Ooh, that's clean i like that but this isn't the reverse thing now <laughs> getting into the rest of the exotics for the current available weapons we only have was two new exotic weapons one is unknown so it's likely whatever comes from the dungeon whenever it comes out this friday and then there's also centrifuge right there and no other weapons currently available so that could just be it for now but then there is new armor for each class one for each the titan one is arbor warden which is definitely an interesting one did not expect this but using your class ability channels defensive light inward providing a grenade that creates a barricade on impact basically if you use your barricade you can then throw your grenade and make another barricade which that's not gonna lie pretty cool sounding although considering this is the exotic and most barricades that or most barricade perks that are good on our other exotic pieces it's hard to say whether or not this will perform at least outperform other ones then in terms of hunters we have triton vice which is basically glaive the exotic Increases Glaive reload speed and melee damage when surrounded. Glaive melee final blows overflow a round to the magazine. Glaive projectile final blows detonate if the Glaive deals matching damage of matching subclass type. So yeah, basically, uh, you know, Lucky Pants, how it just straight up buffs hand cannons, that's it for Glaives now on Hunters. And then we have something similarly interesting on Warlock, we have the Cenotaph Mask which is Trace Rifle the Helmet, and a really weird looking one at that. But basically, steadily reloads a portion of equipped Trace Rifle's magazine from reserves. Dealing damage or uh, damaging a boss with the Trace Rifle matching your subclass marks it as priority target. If an ally delivers the final blow to the priority target, heavy ammo spawns for them. So this is a way to, I suppose, make people use something other than AE on Souls, although just because of how it looks, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it might be hard for people to use this right off the bat. Plus, Trace Rifles, there aren't many that are worth trying to use for boss damage, so... To be determined on whether or not that should be a write-off. But, of course, into the rest of the things, so... We do have Exotic Focusing, but those do come from Lost Sectors, so there is that. Now, into the main bulk of what we're here for, and that is weapons. The broad variety, that is. So, checking with things, we have, first off, a new auto rifle in the form of Old Sterling, which is a new strand adaptive frame auto rifle available from the gunsmith at random places, which, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda liking how many different gunsmith weapons there are. It seems to keep things fresh, definitely, and uh, just a straight up type. Then, for another auto rifle, we have the return of Positive Outlook. It is a Void Amalon 
Precision Frame Auto Rifle, currently dropping from the Strike playlist, and definitely because it is void, it access to things like Repulsor Blaze, possibly just destabilizing rounds. Probably a good time to come back. Definitely, possibly a decent pick there. And then we got a lot of scout rifles coming around, aside from the ones that I don't have. We have the introduction of Last Right, the current Pinnacle scout rifle, which functions very similarly. It's literally practically replacing Long Arm, because aside from full bore and ricochet rounds for basically the most range and the most adaptability, it has access to either keep away or reconstruction in the first slot, and then open and shot and focus fury in that, in addition to four origin traits, for Gambit, Crucible, Vanguard, and the just general Tex Mechanica origin trait. Makes it seem like so all the weapons from the Spider the Watcher are practically worthless, just because now this exists on anything Tex Mechanica. So, it's possible you just have the straight up Crucible roll here with Keep Away Opening Shot, and then the PvE roll for Reconstruction Focus Fury. Not sure if anyone really used this for straight up damage though. Then, in terms of other scout rifles, we have the G Glissando 47, a Soros Strand Scout Rifle in the Vertical Frame category as well. Now, as it's from the Gunsmith, you'll probably see this happening a lot naturally or in his shop, so keep an eye out for that. We also have the return of Randy's Throwing Knife, and right off the bat, there is no question about it. Pretty much its original OP roll of Rapid Hit Kill Clip can still roll. This is a Rapid Fire Kinetic Scout Rifle, which I'm not going to lie, if it has Rapid Hit and Zen Moment again, if you ever were concerned about how stable a weapon could be, that will reduce all of it. This is probably one of the best uh, kinetic scout rifles that ever existed in the game, especially in terms of the Crucible combat arena. But that is all the new scout rifles. Now, pulse rifles, we got a healthy few varieties. So we have the return of the messenger updated and brought back. Oh, well, that can't be right. <laughs> Double kinetic tremors. But access to kinetic tremors is actually pretty solid. So possibly change a meta for the messenger but it is a high impact frame kinetics pulse rifle from trials the return of that which also means adept and we have first of the new seasonal weapons in the firm of different times this is currently the seasonal uh weapon with available with a new origin trait unsated hunger increases handling reload speed and stability when no abilities are fully charged which is an interesting origin trait at that point but then as well, swords gain increased guard resistance and charge rate instead because they don't have access to all those things. This is a strand rapid fire. Uh, definitely looks like the Gambit Prime weaponry. Hard to say whether or not this will be good just because pers personally I'm not a fan of rapid fires. But, you know, there is a good portion of that that is across. But then we also have access once again to Outlast, the original pulse rifle from Gambit Prime. With a new origin trait as well in the form of Disaster Plan, where picking up ammunition increases the weapon's flinch resistance and range, which lasts until it's fired again. Which basically sounds like a built-in opening shot, if, you know, if, if that sounds like anything simple. So, on that note though, it does seem to have some decent rolls. Don't know if this is dropping specifically from Gambit again, or if this is related to the dungeon, just because I know typically we don't see dungeon weapons. But we don't see the full array of Gambit Prime weapons, so it's hard to say. But moving on to hand cannons, we actually got a healthy amount of them in this time. So we have the spare rations, of course, re returning at last with the access to disaster plan like the other ones. And then we also have two other new pulse or er, I keep saying all the wrong things. Hand cannon is in the form of combined action, which is a hand cannon arc from the gunsmith, which means it has access to field tested but also has access to a new perk called Eddy Current, which temporarily increases reload speed after sprinting. This effect is improved when you are amplified, which basically sounds like another way of this is meant to be used on an arc subclass. Of course, Volt Shot on it, so possible god roll there. And we have the kind of pinnacle ritual weapon, which I believe is from available from a pursuit on Neomuna in relation to uh, the new strain aspects. But this does seem to be one of those ritual weapons that it has a set thing, keep away and stats for all in the first slot, as well as Eye of the Storm and Incandescent in the second slot, and choices of an origin trait in Nano Tracer rockets from Neo Muna, and Harmonic Resonance from the uh, Root of Nightmares Raid. But it's hard to say what is in this set, if it's just Neo Muna weapons or not, but hopefully we find more in the future. But 
Then one more hand cannon, the targeted redaction, which is the aggressive frame hand cannon void in the energy slots available from the new seasonal stuff, access to unstated hunger, which also means this is one of the crafted ones. So we have access to another crafted aggressive frame hand cannon. So hopefully things don't get out of hand. And then in terms of submachine guns, we also have access to the rapacious appetite, another seasonal one, this one being a stasis submachine gun. Of course, unsated hunger, as well as a variety of new perks, so it's interesting to see how this turns out, as well as an aggressive frame recoil. Or an aggressive frame... Oh, ha, words. Submachine gun, so it's hard to say if we're going to have another Immortal on our hands. Granted, because even though Immortal is good, it was just nerfed, and a new weapon that can be crafted could possibly put things in per perspective in a new way. But then we also have the Return to the Bug Out Bag, which is a solar adaptive frame SMG, originally from Gambit Prime, of course, Disaster Plane Origin Trait, and a variety of, well, decent perks. I can't imagine that we won't have anything good. And then in terms of sidearms, we have, don't think anything new this season. Well, actually, yep, no new things this season. And the same topic with bows. We don't have anything new in that standpoint. Then into special weapons, we have access to, of course, until its return. Another seasonal one, a strand rapid fire shotgun, which is an interesting idea, which I'll have to, of course, play with it to figure out my opinion of it. But it's hard to enjoy rapid fires because Basso Astionato from Neo Muna, it's nice, but it's not great if that word wording makes any sense. But then, of course, we also have Last Man Standing, an old friend, also from Gambit Prime, an aggressive frame solar shotgun. And already I can tell with access to something like subsistence, this is probably going to be a pretty solid roll of re-emergence. Then, in terms of lightweight grenade launchers, I actually don't think we have anything new in that form as well this season. But into fusion rifles, we have a healthy dose here as well. So, in terms of stuff that just came this season, we have the Return of Loaded Question, a high-impact frayed arc fusion rifle which also has access to his renal perk, Reservoir Burst, as well as Auto-Loading Holster, which is pretty much its original role. So what made this thing pinnacle is pretty much already back. So it's better than ever also because access to an adept form as well of Loaded Question. Just hard to say whether or not it'll live up to its original fame. And then we also have the Pressurized Precision, which is a Strand Fusion Rifle available from, what's the word, Iron Banner, which I'm not gonna lie. I am loving the view of this weapon. There's just something about this that looks so makeshift, but also well done that it just, I just love the way it looks. Very steampunk, but also just shoddy at the same time. And access to something like Hatchling, so possibly good in that aspect as well. But you know, more kinetic uh, fusion rifles as well. Then in terms of sniper rifles, we have the a Distant Pull, a rapid fire stasis. Sniper Rifle, access things like Headstone, Ensemble, Unsated Hunger. Hard to say whether or not this will be solid or bad, but you know, to each their own. And then into the rest of the Sniper Rifles, we have another Gunsmith one in the form of Last Foray. An aggressive frame, field-tested Sniper Rifle from the Gunsmith, in case you're looking for another harder hitting than Rapid Fire. Then we also have Mercurial Overreach, which is an ARC Sniper Rifle dropping specifically from the Comp Playlist. So if you want an access to this, you gotta go and play some comp and struggle through it. Aside from that, it doesn't seem like it might be anything special. Access to snapshot moving target means it's probably one of the flinchiest or quickest moving, but it's hard to say in general just because it's still adaptive. And we also have the return of Soul Survivor, a sniper rifle from Gambit Prime, also adaptive frame, possibly not that great, although it's hard to say just because we actually got a wide variety of snipers, so what's good might not be so good in other places. And then in terms of trace rifles, nothing new there as well. And in terms of glaives, we just have the unexpected resurgence, which is the arc glaive that is in trials this season. Now, I'm not going to lie. I don't think this is going to be good. A glaives, generally, they're pretty great. So they might have access to something good. But I know a lot of trials weapons are made to be good at trials, OP, and a little bit better than everything else. It's hard to say whether or not this will be better than everything else in terms of the glaive category just because it's both not that big and exotic glaives are pretty much where people put most of their focus anyways. Then in terms of swords, we have the return of two others. We have Thin Precipice, which is seasonal and strand and vortex. You might have seen this briefly in the trailer for Season of the Deep, which I want to give this thing a run because something about that just makes it seem nice. Plus, if it has access to things like Hatchling or maybe unraveling rounds in some form or fashion this could be a pretty solid option considering vortex frames have practically died in this day of destiny 
And we also have Just In Case, which is another solar sword from Gambit Prime, which it looks like it's got its ornaments already hardwired into it, different than the rest. But another adaptive frame sword, basic sword with a, of course, X disaster plan, which gives it increased charge rate uh, when, you know, picking up ammo. So there you go. Then no other grenade launchers aside from, let's see, we have Swarm of the Raven returning once again to Iron Banner. With access to things like destabilizing rounds, this could be another PvE monster as well. But in terms of that, that is the only big heavy grenade launcher added. And rocket launchers, interesting thing here because we have Braytech Osprey back in the Nightfall playlist. A void high impact frame rocket launcher. I believe this is one of the highest damage per rocket things. Access, well, this might actually be kind of nuts. Access to destabilizing rounds for volatile as well as cluster bombs as well. Cluster bombs are kind of falling out of the metal. Like, I don't even think I've seen anything spawn in cluster bombs lately. So, hopefully, this is worth the grind. And of course, because of that, it is also access to an adept version with adept big ones, better stats in general, weird looking look to it, but. Here's hoping. And then in terms of linear fusion rifles, we have just one in Laser Painter, which is a Vice Precision Frame linear fusion rifle dropping from the Gambit playlist now. So if you want access to a fallback type hand that is not craftable, but is Strand, there you go. We have access to more of them, but that is it for that. In terms of machine guns, there's nothing new there. So that is pretty much the broad of the weapons that we got in terms of everything. Now that it covers the exotics, it covers the weapons, and now let's cover what is, of course, craftable. Now, if you go to check your collections in the Patterns and Catalyst, you can go through everything, like I mentioned in the start of the video. Last Wish weapons are here, so Age Old Bond has returned. Tyranny of Heaven is now craftable, as well as Nation of the Beats and Targeted Redaction from the Season. Then into Pulse Rivals, we have the Chattering Bone and different times from the Season as well. And in terms of Scout Rifles, Transfigurations. Sidearms, nothing new there. But in terms of submachine guns, we also have Rapacious Appetite from the season. Then in terms of fusion rifles, we have Techion Force from Last Wish. No new glaives, no new grenade launchers in the special slot. But in terms of shotguns, we have the Until It's Return from the season. And in terms of sniper rifles, we have Supremacy from Last Wish and Distant Pull from the season. And no new craftable trace rifles. And in the heavy slot, no new uh, heavy grenade launchers. No new linear fusion rifles, no new machine guns. Rocket launchers, we have the Apex Predator for crafting, and in terms of swords, we have the Thin Precipice from the season as well. So I'm not gonna lie, in terms of expansion, we don't have a lot new craftable, let's say. We literally get the season and we got Last Wish weapons, but to Last Wish, there are quite a few of them. I believe it's everything but a sidearm and an SMG and a shotgun. And practically every other weapon, uh, or, well, actually, no grenade launchers in any form. But regardless, we have a lot of weapons to hunt for from Last Wish and some from the season, but Bungie is making them easy to find pretty much. So hopefully we can get those all sorted out soon. Now let me know what you're excited for in terms of weaponry. I'm definitely itching to try out the new Arc Blind uh, auto rifle in a build. But aside from that, my name is Matt Scorpion. I will see you in the next video.